Now, this is not no, the, 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 the form that they would probably ask you for this on the exam. On the exam, the instructor will probably say, find the magnitude and direction of the displacement. Find the magnitude. To make a right triangle. With right. That's right. So let's practice that skill. What we have to do now is we've already expressed the overall, we've expressed the displacement in terms of components, but on the exam, you're going to have to express the displacement probably in terms of overall magnitude and direction. We talked a little bit last time about how to do that. So um, let's see, how would we uh, express this in components? Well, we need a whole new right triangle. Um, so first of all, I'll draw the x component. Should the x component be pointing right or left? Right, right, right. So here's the x component. And then remember to use the head to tail method. So I'm going to put the y component's tail at the head of the x component. And that should also be in the positive direction. So here's our delta y. And then where's delta r going to be? That's from the initial tail to the final head. That's going to be the hypotenuse. So that would give us this. Now we know that delta x is positive 79 meters, and delta y is positive 27 meters. Let's make sure we get this right. 79 and 27, good. What symbol should I use for this side? This would be delta r, the change in the <coughs> overall position. Well, how would we find the magnitude of delta r? Pythagorean theorem. Yeah, here we can just use Pythagorean theorem. So we have that the hypotenuse equals the x component squared. The hypotenuse squared is the x component squared plus the y component squared. x component is 79, y component is 27. So again, we don't need to actually using the algebra here. <coughs> I got something different. Oh, yeah, yeah, because I forgot to take the square root. So we have delta r squared equals 69.70. So r is the square root of 69.70. 83.5? Yes. So I'll round that up to 83. Shouldn't we round it to 84? Because it's 1.4. Oh, well, 1. yeah. I, because I rounded these off like this, I just got 83.48. So if you round that off to, to here, it would be 83. But if you guys are rounding off differently, you might have gotten a slightly different answer here. Uh, when you do the homework, it tells you how much to round off, right? And the, uh, on the exams, the instructor won't care about that too much. A lot of the exam problems will be in, in very. They don't really even care on the homework. Like, they tell yeah. you to do it to two safe things, but I never do. And, and then, then they just they say, say correct. And yeah. You may have rounded differently. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, that's a nice, easygoing, friendly attitude. All right, so we'll go along with that. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> so this is approximately rounded off to uh, 83. Now this, I'm not going to put a sign on. Remember that overall vectors don't get signs because they can't, they're not parallel nor anti-parallel to an axis. So there's no way to figure out the sign. OK, so are we done, or do we need to do more work? Right. Remember I said that on the exam, they would ask you for the magnitude and direction of the displacement. Well, all we figured out so far is the magnitude of the displacement. We've seen that the magnitude is 83 meters, but we haven't figured out the direction. Well, how can we express the direction of an overall vector? I just said that we cannot express the direction of the overall vector using signs, because it's not parallel or anti-parallel to an axis. As somebody already mentioned, we talked about this last time, you use the angle to express the direction of the overall vector. It's important to have in your notes. A lot of students forget that. To express the direction of the overall vector, figure out the angle that the tail of the vector is making. So we want to figure out this angle that the tail of the vector is making. So what, what equation should I write down to figure this out? Um, sine theta plus 20 plus theta. Sine, tangent, cosine. Sure. So let's pick one. Let's actually pick tangent just because that's the most conventional. Because remember, a couple seconds ago, we didn't know the hypotenuse. So it would have been nice to figure out this angle even without the hypotenuse. Well, for that, we need the tangent, right? Wait, why is the angle not 60 degrees? Is that a stupid question? Uh, that's a good question. Well, why should it be 60 degrees? I don't know, because it started out at 60 degrees. Ah, good. So the acceleration is making a 60 degree angle with the velocity. Oh, but this is a completely different vector. This okay. is not the acceleration. This is the displacement. Okay. That's right. 
That's, a, again, one way that's important not to be lazy. A lot of students might write these pictures, but they might not label the vectors. Well, if you don't label the vectors, you get them all confused with each other. This picture is useless unless we know this is the A vector, and this is the V initial vector, and this is delta R, delta X, and delta Y. So we want to not just write down our arrows, but label each one. So this angle, there's no reason why it needs to be the same as the original angle. I'm glad you brought that up. That would be a common student mistake. All right, so um, it would be conventional here to use tangent, even though at this point you could use sine or cosine. So what should I write down about the tangent here? The tangent, the inverse tangent of 27 over 79 is three. Good. I'll start like this. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. That'll be 27 over 79. Toa, opposite over adjacent. We don't plug in the signs here because this is all about lengths. Now, how do we get theta by itself? Like you said, we take the inverse tangent. And what do we get for that? 18.86 squared. Right. So rounding that off to 19 degrees. So how would we answer this on the exam? We would say that the displacement has an overall magnitude of 83 meters, and it's making and it's making an angle of 19 degrees. And if you actually draw the picture, then the, the reader will know what angle you're talking about. So that's all we would need to specify this. So again, I want to emphasize: How do you specify the direction of an overall vector by the angle that it's making? How do you specify the direction of a vector component by a positive or a negative sign? So the way we specify the direction of vector components is different than how we specify the direction of an overall vector. So when they ask you for the net displacement, are you always supposed to give the angle? Because for this one, they didn't write the angle. It's only when they ask you for the magnitude and direction. Did they actually say that, though? They just wrote giving a net displacement of 84 meters. I would say that their answer is incomplete because displacement is a vector. So you haven't actually said what the displacement is unless you've given both the magnitude and the direction. If they had said, what is the magnitude of the net displacement, then it's good enough just to say 84 meters. So like to be safe on the test. Yes. Yeah. That's right. However, what your instructor will probably do, so there's, there's no doubt, the instructor will say, find the magnitude and direction of the net displacement. That's the typical language on exams. Find the magnitude and displacement. I'm sorry. I, I, misspeaking. Find the magnitude and direction of the net displacement. Find the magnitude and direction of the net displacement. That's a signal, first of all, that they don't want the answer just in components, that they want you to give the overall vector, and that they want the direction. And even then, students oftentimes forget that they need to give the direction as well as the magnitude. So that's the important thing not to forget uh, during the exam. Okay, so let's review the key ideas here. The most important thing is to see how similar this is to one-dimensional motion. We're using the same general framework. And again, we simply write out our five variables, but we have two cases here, both the x and the y components. A big mistake that a lot of students would make here is just to plug in 0.82 over here, or 0.82 over here. But we have to remember to break this into components. So always write down the subscripts to remind yourself that the things that have to be broken into components. That would, that would be the most common mistake here, I think, not breaking the acceleration into components. But we saw uh, how to do that.